the overpressure valve mod. So there is a uh, valve inside the machine uh, which basically releases water when the pressure inside the boiler and the puck reaches 15 bar. Now I'm just going to show you what I did. Um, there's loads of stuff online about this. First thing I do is make sure that it's cold and it hasn't been on for a while and that the plug is off and out the wall and out the back. So we're going to take a little look inside and requires two Phillips head screws, one here. Some of the older machines also have screws here and here, so you undo those. And then the front pops out. There's an earth wire there. And yeah, we're just gonna slot that earth out from that spade connector up there, or you can just move it to the side. You don't even, you know what, we're not even gonna remove that. What we have in here, we've got the switch plate at the front here. Uh, we've got the boiler, which is right here steam valve and that copper tube goes down to the steam wand which is the thing I said you can over tighten and twist and over here we've got the pump so what happens is we will get water coming up the silicone tube here right in the bottom there into the pump the pump pressurizes it comes out this tube here down here and into the bottom of the boiler but there's also a second tube here I'll explain that in a minute. So it goes into the boiler, does its thing, goes through the group head, out into your pump. The pump is pumping away and the water is getting pushed in through these tubes. Now if you've ground your coffee correctly, the water doesn't come out immediately, so it starts to build pressure up. It also has a valve at the top here. So when the water going in reaches 15 bar, the valve in here will open and it will release water out the top which goes back into the tank. It just stops the system pressure ever getting higher than 15 bar. And what that does as well then is that sets your brew pressure or your highest pressure you can brew at. Most espresso, well the common sort of trend is 9 bar. This brings us to the other part of kit you need to do this which is you need a pressure gauge. It's a cheap one off eBay. It's a 3 8 um, BSP thread connector going into what looks like I don't know, it's tiny, quarter inch, something like that, maybe smaller. Um, fittings, this is all just came as one unit. And what this does is this screws perfectly onto the stock Casio Porter filter. Now what you would do first, before you even open the machine, is screw this on and have a little look to see what your machine is, uh, what pressure your machine is, is uh, brewing at. Right, so we've got the gauge in and we're just going to turn it on and see what the pressure is at. Probably should let the machine warm up, but I'm not too worried, so... For some reason this is a leaky... It's, I've got a leaky gasket, but we're still hitting 15 bar, so... Oh, we're hitting 10 bar! So what I think I've realised there is it wasn't actually leaking. The, uh, the seal between the basket and the group head here, that was fine. What isn't fine is that in this stock port filter, you have this little spacer, and when you push that down in there, the uh, basket sits on top. I think it actually butts up against it, but it means that the seal between here, which is kind of on the atmosphere side of the basket, there is no good seal there, and if you put a pressure gauge here it means there isn't actually a solid airtight seal for the gauge so there's always going to be some leakage so I'm going to try it without the uh, without that little uh, plastic piece in and with a decent basket and we'll see if it's any better but right here we go oh wow all right so what I've done here is I've actually put the porta filter in without the basket I don't think it'll damage the gasket, but it's the only way to get a seal on the actual pressure gauge, I think. There we go, we can hear the OPV valve, there it is. It's open, it's letting water back into the tank. And that's setting it in at about nine and a half bar. I'm gonna make that a little lower. I think 10 bar is probably fine. Um, but I want to be brewing at 
lower than nine bar. So we will we've taken the lid off again. Obviously, it's not plugged in, and it's cool. So I'm gonna pop this off. There's probably a bit of water gonna come out of that. There we go. Then we're gonna get a socket and loosen that nut off. And it takes a big socket, so it's a 17 mil socket. But yeah, you're just gonna put that over and loosen it. And it's lefty loosey. Remember, when you're looking down at it, it should be anti-clockwise. There we go. And there's a gasket too. So inside there on my machine, there is. That is an Allen head uh, socket. So I can put an Allen key in there and turn that to adjust the pressure. A uh, hole in the middle takes a 5mm Allen key and you'll know when you've got it in because it drops right in. There we go. Now I'm just going to turn this anti-clockwise by about 45 degrees. There we go, done. So now I'm going to put everything back on, I'm going to put this back on, close it all up, put the earth back on and then check the pressure. So we'll go again. Hey, and that's looking pretty good. And the valve is going. If you have a newer one, you may have a spring in there. And it's much easier because you literally just take out the plug, put the new spring in which is set to a different pressure and you're done. So I think taking the uh, really slow approach where you kind of iteratively just give it an eighth of a turn each time anti-clockwise to bring the pressure down. Great, that is the nine bar mod done.